So before we get to the labeling, I just want to show you what I've done with the actual circuit label. Now you notice that I've got a little box placed around this. Now this is in a tribute, and I've also placed this little rectangular box around that. And uh, what I want you to to, uh, to notice here is just that uh, this little rectangular box is going to help me to be able to connect each of the corners of um, that particular label to the circuit that it happens to be attached to. So let me show you an example here. When I bring this in now to this plan, I can actually now take this object and I can move it according to this particular corner and I can link it up like so. Now this is actually a line that will not print. That line around the outside is just for me and my purposes for lining it up and that's going to make it really handy because no matter what orientation that particular um, outlet is, I can always actually move it so that it's an equal distance away. And that's going to keep it um, really neat and clean and uh, just help with your presentation. It is an optional step. You don't need to do it, um, but it will, will help out for sure. And so I, I don't know if that's the, uh, the labels that I want, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go through and I'm going to place them just approximately around all of my circuits here, around all of them, and I'm going to move them in position. Now keep it con consistent. So that means if you link it to uh, to one, sorry, I don't know what happened there. If you link it to one side on one wall, then keep linking it on that side. Make sure you think about the room that you have as well, and try and keep it uh, as consistent as possible. So you can see that I've uh, been very consistent with my labeling onto the which side or which quadrant, I guess you could say, of that particular label it's attached to with the um, um, outlets. All right, so you want to try and do that uh, again. If you have the same ones across the top here, then I can actually go along through and I can make multiple copies of it. Okay, now these are these numbers are going to change, so don't get uh, hung up on the fact that you know these are all the same circuit. That's obviously not possible. Try not to get too uh, too worked up about that. At this point, we will be changing it. Um, but first we just want to lay them out. We want to lay them out as consistently as possible. All right, so now let's take a look at dividing up the circuits for this particular plan. Um, so we're going to start in the uh, room number six here. Now, each of these labels um, have to be on the right side of the panel. Um, they are convenience outlet receptacles. They need to exist on the right side of the panel, which means that they're all going to be all even numbers. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we can only have a certain amount, according to our project specifications, we can only have a certain amount per particular um, space. So if you look at the maximum number of convenience outlets on one circuit, let's just scroll down the list here, what we're dealing with is offices, which means we can only have a maximum of eight outlets on one circuit in an office. Storage spaces and corridors, well, corridors is two. Um, and if we look at the manufacturing spaces, we have six. So we have to keep that in mind as we're going through here. So this would be an office, which means that we can only have a maximum of eight convenience outlets on any one circuit. And remember, we need to try and keep three circuits together because they all share the same neutral. So we're going to, uh, we got one, two, three, four, five, we got six outlets in this room. That means that we're going to have three on each circuit. Now, the reason why I say that is we actually want to alternate. So for example, this outlet here, I might use circuit number two. This one, I'm going to use circuit number four. This one, I'm going to alternate. So no two circuits that are together. If you look at the circuits that are next to each other on a wall, they should all be on a different circuit number. So let's change this. Yeah, now this one's four. That's okay. Change this one to two. Now that's going to get tricky because um, if you look at it, two, four, two, four, two, four. Now it's all um, on different circuits, and uh, each circuit next to each other is not on the same um, the same circuit number. Now that that'll be important because if you have um, an office here, for example, and you have one person who has a lot of equipment in that one corner, uh, you want that to be on two separate circuits. 
Um, otherwise, you'll end up loading that circuit up too much, and uh, it could end up blowing the circuit. So we want to try and uh, maintain some alternate. We alternate around the room, and we also want to uh, make sure, yeah, make sure that we don't exceed um, the total number of uh, outlets on any one circuit. So we've used three of the total eight, which means we have another five that we can use from circuit number two, and another five from circuit number four. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to. I'm going to leave that one on four. I'm going to change this one to two. I'm going to change this one to 2, just sort of keeping mental track, 2, I'm going to change this one to 2, and then I'll change, well now i get got a problem because I've got alternating circuits, but now this one is going to be, have to be on a, a separate circuit um, all alone. Uh, so what I might do there is I might actually um, make this one on its own circuit, uh, or on a different circuit, might actually put this onto circuit number 6. So now that I have that on circuit number six, I'm going to change this, change these around. Circuit number two here. I have to change all of them here. Oops, four. Two, right? We have alternating circuits. Two, four. Now if we look back this way, two, four, two, four. I think everything's good there. So we, if we look at um, outlets that are next to each other, they are not on the same. They're not the same numbers. And if we look at outlets that are, um, you know, in the room, they they use. Well, we have haven't exceeded our maximum yet, so we still we had three in this room. We have got one, two, three, and uh, on, again on circuit two, so we have two more that we could do on circuit two, and one, two, three on circuit four, and we've started circuit number six. Might be handy actually to have a little piece of paper with a tally beside it, and so you can actually go through and you can tally off each of the individual circuits. All right, let's take a look at room number 14 here. Now, room number 14 has a total of um, nine different outlets on the circuit. And if we look at the specs for manufacturing spaces, we can fit a maximum of six. So we're going to uh, have to at least two circuits on that one. Um, so again, depending on what you're doing with rooms three and two, uh, room corridor number one, well, that's going to be on its own circuit anyways. So we can't really uh, carry off any of the uh, circuits that are um, attached to uh, 10 can't do that. So we're going to uh, start, I'm going to start a new number here, maybe start circuit number 12 and circuit number 14. And here's where we're going to run into a problem, because we need to try and keep it on a different uh, circuit than the one next to it. So whichever circuit you are um, using over here, um, you want to try and uh, you know keep that consistent. So yeah, we're going to have to uh, uh, you're going to have to think about you know what you're going to. I would recommend you know planning it out with paper first, so that you don't run into any issues as you're going along and help speed things up a little bit. Um, but that uh, it's going to be a little tricky trying to uh, sort out exactly which circuits belong to which. Um, outlets, but that's uh, the beauty of this assignment.